All right. Hello, Simon. Hi, Nina. How are you doing? Good. How are you? You're back in home office? Uh, yes, today I'm back in home office, but generally I'm in the office. So yeah, <laughs> Corona yes. is still somewhere there, but uh, yeah, I think for the office at least we've we've solved that one. All Actually, right. I, so, to be honest, mm -hmm, I think ahead. we will see something um, in the in the office data, um, also connected to home office. I'm pretty sure we just discussed it in the German webcast, and um, yeah, I'm curious what would you what are your thoughts about that? What a natural conversation starter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, perfect. Again, um, actually, welcome to all of our attendees already who are with us. Normally, the way we do this, if you haven't um, attended one of us, pre one of our previous webcasts, uh, we wait until it ticks about 5:01, so we give you that extra non-German moment to be late, and then we hit it off with an introduction of Building Radar. Why are we even the ones to speak about this? Um, intro about about myself and about, and Simon, and then we go straight into the topics. So I think five of one already hit it. So we can start it off. We have 45 minutes planned out for today. And um, we'll start off basically with myself. My name is Nina uh, and I am here with my co-host Simon monthly and uh, happy to welcome you. I am with Willing Radar uh, about a year now and I'm responsible for our sales and sales development topics. Yeah. And my name is Simon. I'm at um, more than three and a half years now at Building Radar, and I'm pretty glad to um, have this um, now monthly English-speaking webcast with you, Nina. Cool. If you guys have been with us already with this webcast, you probably realize this uh, this little logo in the upper corner has changed. I want to just take a moment and say we have been through a rebranding in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we released a new website, uh, updated our data as well. So I'm uh, really happy to introduce you for the first time in our webcast, our uh, Building Radar 2.0. Yes, cool, and run us have, the agenda. Of course, um, also new data um, as four weeks are over and we we uh, renewed our and uh, there are as first agenda point, we have the Building Radar indicators, mm -hmm. which um, you might know if you listen to the webcast or followed the slides in the past. We have some new slides also in comparison to um, German um, stock market data. As a second part, we have um, comparison between countries, uh, mainly um, the US and Great Britain. And as third topic, I'm pretty excited about that, is a new construction cycle survey. We will have a live poll within this webcast with you, with the attendees, and also present um, numbers uh, we evaluated beforehand. Nice. All right. So, Nina, let's start with the indicators. As always, we um, show you um, um, a snippet. Um, what an early stage information is at Building Radar. So if you are not a um, Building Radar customer who has access to the Building Radar platform, you might not know um, that this is what we call an early stage information. So um, I just realized it's in German, so um, my apologies for that. But um, the, the information says that there will be a new office building um, at the Adenauer Platz, bow begin, so construction start is in two years. We have um, confirmed information about um, uh, associated company, this Vivela Bau um, GmbH, and we have a source where we found um, this early stage information. Um, our sources are based on um, natural language processing, so we detect information about construction projects in German and in English um, speaking language, in newspapers, on online websites, etc. And whenever there is um, a text written, written about um, upcoming construction projects or an undergoing construction project, we can detect that as construction data. Like Simon and, said, also when you are hearing exactly here, like early stage information, this is the type of information that we are referring to, the, the information that we are collecting through natural language processing. Exactly. And since the start of Corona, or yeah, in, in Europe, 
and also in Germany, we um, yeah we invented this this webcast format um, because we yeah initially wanted to give a contribution to um, this whole Corona situation and ask ourselves if our data can indicate um, can be an indicator also for the um, coronavirus um, pandemic. And as you see here, these are aggregated early stage information for construction projects in Europe. We clearly see a negative corona effect since February 2020 until April 2020 with the lowest point um, here um, shortly um, or at the beginning of April 2020 and a recovery um, until until um, to the pre-crisis level um, till the till our our last webcast so in our last webcast we presented um, something which is called a, a v development in um, construction data or in data in general and now the um, um, so the, the finding for for this month webcast would be that we see um yeah something like a, a short decrease or a little decrease in the in the early stage information for for europe this might be connected to a, a summer break a summer break um you you might notice um there are schools hol school holidays there are breaks um in in all kind of um um economic um environments but it could also be an indicator for um a second um, a second uh, wave, corona wave. I guess here we'll be able to better tell once August has passed as well, because like you said, I think all of us here who are also in sales can definitely tell that this August or end of July, August is really the, the sales break, how we call it. Exactly. Um, we definitely see a recovery um, over 100 percentage point um, since the lowest point until today for um, the indicator for Europe. Um, if we just look at the countries, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, we see an even higher recovery since the lowest point. So the lowest point for um, DACH was shortly after the lowest point in Europe, also at the beginning of April. And the data recovered um, until today or until last week um, by over 124 percentage points and um, as in all slides the uh, corresponding date is calendar week seven where um, the the first corona shutdowns i think it was in northern italy started and corona became pretty active in the um yeah in the news media in our for our economy for our social life um, etc of course. We also present you an indicator for for the um, for the German market. It um, looks similar to the development in whole Europe and in Dach. And we can um, yeah we can calculate that we are now at um, 25 percentage points below the pre-crisis level. Um, so this is what Nina called, or um, we called um, like um, what might be a summer break or um, caused due to a summer break, but which could also be caused due to um, yeah, a second wave. I will just stop you there quickly as we have a message from Philip from Schuko, Belgium. Um, about the languages, is there already an implementation of the Flemish language in Billingrader? I can also give you um, a quick breakdown of that. So actually the way it works is we have a couple of different sources that we pull our information from. When it comes to early stage information, at the moment we're only able to read it in English and in German. When it comes to tender type of information, this is also possible in other languages. However, when it comes to Flemish specifically, um, <laughs> though I'm not the one in the tech team, I would say this is this is not something that I that we, we would see coming in the next couple of weeks or months. So at the moment, early stage information definitely not uh, something that uh, that is available in Flemish. Exactly. I hope um, we end that question or that I have managed to answer your question. 
besides that, um, Philip, but I'm um, pretty open to um, to give you some insights for the um, the Belgian market. If you would like to receive that, um, I will just send you an email after this webcast. And yeah, let's see if we can um, um, do something for you. Um, looking at the um, okay, yeah, I will send out the email. Um, the um, looking again at Germany, we um, of course can look back um, to 2019. We can even look back um, until the beginning of 2018. But um, in this whole coronavirus um, environment. Uh, of course, we're interested um, now in this um, in the situation till February, and we see what we call or what um, economics call a redevelopment in the data. So there was a more or less stable development since June um, 2019 until the end of 2019, where we see this seasonal break. This is um, totally normal. So this break would be due to the um, to the um, new year um, switch. We always have this little break, but this decrease is the negative Corona effect. And as we see that the this this negative effect does not um, hold on a low level, we do not have an L development, but clearly a V development. Um, which is um, yeah given by the fact that we um, shortly after the lowest point or directly after the lowest point we reach the pre-crisis level. And as you see here, this is what we um, mentioned earlier. What what might be a summer break um, issue, but it could also be indicator for um, a second wave. Um, this will be um, um, an exciting question to be answered next week, in two weeks, in three weeks, and of course in the ne next webcast in four weeks. Totally. These are um, numbers based on um, total index, and we also have different segments we can um, separate our data into. So a construction project might not only be a, um, an office building, as we saw in the example. A project, a construction project, is also could also be um, a residential building. It could be um, even street work or um, um, a tunnel, new tunnel which is built. This would be um, yeah another segment, and we we question if there are different developments in the different segments. Um, the total development is in dark blue. It's similar to the um, development in the residential sector. Um, we cannot really explain this development at the moment, this sharp decrease of the residential data. I mean, um, we can just give indications, but this could also be uh, indicated to the, the summer break. But um, let's see how this develops. But what we can definitely say, Nina, is that um, the, <laughs> the office segment, as well as the hotel business segment, um, do not show a redevelopment. So the, the hotel business um, might show um, or might have shown a redevelopment if if it had, had would have reached the pre-crisis level, but it did not since the beginning of July. It stagnated, and even worse. Is um, are the data for the office sector, where we um, see a, a decline since first of um, June. This might be, and this is what I said in the beginning, might be connected also to the whole question of um, home office. So, nice. uh, is office space really needed in the future? Is it needed in um, uh, in a dimension we we had it before Corona? And um, Nina, I. I know most of our, I mean, all of our customers, um, most of our customers had to switch into um, home office, like like us, for example. And um, yeah, this, I mean, it's all, again, just an indication that this is connected to the home office question, but um, I'm, I'm curious how this develops. Yeah, I mean, this has been a topic we've been covering for quite a while now. That's also been these first drops that we were able to see. Of course, hotels, that was an absolutely clear one, like you were mentioning too, but this is where we see 
a really early drop in information and a very low point as well. Um, and the office one, of course, I mean, we've been having, we've been seeing so much information in terms of big companies uh, which are reducing office space, which are, um, yeah, basically allowing home office or complete remote work for, um, for what was, it, I think, some of them even for the rest of, uh, of basically of the life and some for until the end of the year or the next couple of years. So I guess this is going to be a topic that's going to continue to be interesting throughout the following months and potentially even years. Yeah. And we are happy to, um, yeah, to observe this development. Um, this is something new we present to you. Uh, this is a comparison of our building radar index to um, the German um, stock market index DAX. Um, there are two or three um, very insightful um, or pretty um, interesting insights. First, um, the um, stock index for the uh, most important German index DAX um, develops similar to our building radar index. So we um, see the corona effect for both indexes. And even more interesting, we see um, a faster decrease um, of the data of the index for, for the building radar index than for the, for the stock market. This might indicate that our data um, reacts faster um, to something, as, to an external shock like the coronavirus. And if this would be true, we could ask if um, this, this decrease in our index indicates um, something which is would be called like a, a W development, so that we see after the, the redevelopment, a second redevelopment, so that it, um, which would be connected, for example, to a second corona wave. This is also really interesting that at the beginning of the year, we're actually seeing uh, the higher numbers or higher levels on the DAX index, whereas the building radar index was already a drop. And then mm -hmm. in June, we are seeing here, um, again, um, the, the small peak from DAX and then a much bigger peak from building radar data. So I'm really also, like you were mentioning, interested long term, if we were to follow this kind of information, can we at some point really see um, if something happens with one of the indexes, like could we predict how the other one will uh, continue to develop? I would love to keep this topic on for the following uh, webcast as well. Nina, I think uh, we definitely will do. <laughs> um, I see no questions from your side, um, so I will um, continue in the presentation. This is a slide you might also know from past webcasts. We um, split our general um, early stage information into structure, structural engineering, projects and civil engineerings. And what we see is that the civil engineerings, which would be street works, for example, or tunnels or bridges, um, recovering um, faster than the structural engineering sector. It even, we mentioned that before, um, but again, um, we even see that the civil engineering sector recovers um, weeks earlier than the structural engineering sector. I think these are three weeks here. And for both sectors, we see the, um, yeah, this increase, uh, this decrease. Um, we are not sure um, what to make out of it at the moment. Of course, also for, for all of our attendees, for this kind of information, structural, civil, public, private, also different types of um, t projects, like we were looking at hotels and offices and so on. If some of this information is really of interest to you, feel free to reach out to us afterwards too, uh, because by all means, we do have more than this. We try to filter through to find out what makes most sense for us to, to cover in this 30 or 45 minutes of our webcast. Um, so really, if you're noticing something that's really of interest, similar to what uh, to how um, Philip has reached out to us, feel free to write us a question here or just reach out directly and we'll provide you with more information on the topic. We also 
um, divide our data into public and private construction projects. And again, we see um, a similar but slightly different development. Um, again, we have um, one sector which redevelops um, faster than the other. So we again have this um, lack of three to four weeks where the public projects um, are increasing already and the private projects are decreasing, still decreasing. Um, I, Nina, we mentioned it, right? Um, it might be connected to um, that um, public um, tenders or subsidies um, are um, published earlier and uh, the private sector might be more um, yeah, fearful about uh, the future, right? Something like that. Um, we definitely see that at the same time, um, now the, the, um, the both sectors decreased again. It's actually quite interesting for me here, like you mentioned, we've been having this, uh, this topic for a while as well um, on whether the private sector will really go forward and, and develop back onto the pre-corona crisis level. And again, exactly as, as you were mentioning, we say in each webcast, at which point are we going to see this trust into what's currently happening uh, from private investors really being willing to put in their money um, and this this kind of pre-crisis or over pre-crisis levels are really really interesting to see sadly now again um, we're seeing this kind of beginning of august drops and um, i guess this will for all of our sectors be a very very interesting one to see in one month in the next webinar to um, is this really just a summer break or are we um, yeah, running ourselves more into the negative again? We might get some um, also um, again today um, some answers from you, from the att attendees and also from our polls about the, the next three months um, in, the, in the third part of this web webcast. But um, let's switch to the second part. Firstly, um, comparison of countries. The question is, is if there is there any difference in development between the different countries? Yes, there is. Um, as you can see here, the data for Austria um, significantly develops differently than um, Germany and Switzerland. We have a later decrease. Um, we have a lower lowest point and um, a steeper increase in the data. We have this break in the Australian data. Um, yeah, which in the trend is still increasing. And also we see this drop, we are still 38 percentage points below pre-crisis level for Austri Austria, while we are um, still below or again below um, pre-crisis level in, in the data for Switzerland in Austria. This um, refers to the early stage information. This slide refers to the public tenders. Nina, you mentioned it before. Um, we see where we, you mentioned the, the different um, sources um, concerning the language. Um, so there's also a difference in the um, data for tenders and early stage information um, in the fact that there is, we, we don't see any corona influence yet. Um, for the public tenders in these three countries. Um, and just to give you a background information, um, in the previous, uh, previous webcast as well, we've looked at this kind of data from 2019 as well. And the reason also why we're saying there is a corona level, uh, crisis or not, we're on the data or obvious uh, through the data is because we see these kind of dips and drops that you see on the current slide as quite a usual thing when it comes to tender. So it's nothing new. Whereas when it comes to early stage information, you're really seeing a regular year without Corona being rather stable, whereas with Corona, a specific time point where everything rather drops. Yep. And regarding this slide, and in addition to you, Nina, um, we might see here this we might see a little decrease trend, decreasing trend in for Switzerland data. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also too early to to say that this um, could be connected to to Corona. Of course. 
Um, what do we see here? We um, now have a comparison between data for whole of Europe and the United States. The decrease was pretty similar. Also, um, data for the United States um, decreased two weeks later than for Europe. And the redevelopment to the pre-crisis level um, is also um, significantly differently because um, data for the United States did not reach pre-crisis level yet. Also, although we at the moment um, see something pretty interesting, Nina, um, mm -hmm. we are 10 percentage points below pre-crisis level for the U United States, and we are um, um, lower for for the um, Europe indicator as we saw on the on a pretty on the early on the on the first slide. So there are two insights: the development switched here, mm -hmm. and um, now again. Yeah, this X is really interesting actually. In uh, end of May or last week of May, um, where we were seeing kind of Europe rather recovering when it comes to regular life let's call it that way when it comes to offices and so on whereas the us really just had that extra dip to it but now with the new x with europe going to, um, under the us data this is also going to be a development that i really want to follow further we also follow the development um for um united kingdom compared to the development for whole europe we see that um, UK did reach once the uh, pre-crisis level, um, but overall, since the lowest point, um, developed um, um, not faster but slower. <laughs> slower is the word. Slower than um, data for for Europe. This might be also connected to the more um, yeah lacked um, decision decisions from the British government might be yeah makes sense i think that actually brings us to our third part which is an interactive part of today's webinar and we would actually love to hear from you um from your experience from your thoughts on the topic that you see on the screen so take us further simon yes so the idea is um there is a construction cycle for each construction project so there's a concept phase where an investor or um yeah, investor decides to build um, um, a construction project. There is a planning phase um, and there is a complete, completion phase. And um, our data covers all of these three um, phases, um, starting with looking for new um, construction sites, for example. And the idea now is to, um, or the idea is to, that we ask our customers and also other persons three specific questions which would be the following so regarding the conception phase um, how likely um, or how will acquisition activities for newly planned construction projects developed over the next three months and um, this question we ask um, our customers and other persons and we want to ask um, the same question now to you and for that um, yeah, thank you, Julia. <laughs> um, we have this question where you can participate. Um, we see when everybody um, voted, and I'm excited on um, the results for um, so, so these, these live results. And after that, we will present you the, um, the results from the um, from our poll. So, Nina, let's give that um, a minute time. Absolutely. Until everybody can have um, have voted. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you should be able to select one of the three um, answers. Um, yeah, we're positive. already, from what we're seeing over um, over 50% of you have voted, so we would love mm -hmm. to see also for the rest of you guys, um, where do you see the industry standing at the moment? I 
think we have the time right to um, give it another 30 seconds. Sure. We will have two other questions um, where you can give your, um, your, your, your vote. And I'm curious um, if your vote will or your poll will match what we found out beforehand. Absolutely. And if you have like a really good uh, tip or reason or something you would like to share that you feel is relevant for the others to know as well, by all means, you can write it in the questions or in the chat function too. Um, we'd love to to understand also where do potentially our what, where does our data potentially not match um, or does match um, what you are seeing in industry or what you are planning in your company. All right. So we have a result, Nina. Mm -hmm. um, Fifty percent say um, um, say neutral. So um, considering the next three months, um, but even but. Um, 38% say they have a positive feeling um, about acquisition of um, newly planned construction projects. Um, let's see, and I hope I don't make any mistake, how this looks like uh, in our results. So let's switch back. Yeah, here are the results from um, our poll beforehand. Um, responses were uh, mainly negative. So 55% of um, the persons we talked to said um, they have a negative feeling about concerning this question. Only 21% had a positive um, answer. Indicators, um, which we just want to mention two of them. One example we, we've been given to was, for example, um, signatures on new contracts were withheld from one day to the next due to Corona. So, um, for example, um, I think in this case, an investor was likely to sign something new. Um, yeah, signature was just withheld. And um, another comment was that, um, that there's a noticeable uncertainty to new initiative um, to to initiate new projects and i think for yeah. both of these we can actually pull a parallel uh, when we read the first one signature on contracts were withheld and um, this is something that i'm sure most of you from from uh, the larger enterprises know of uh, also plenty of budget pre freezes we've experienced them as well we've heard a lot about them also from our customers from our paying customers right now so this is Something that, yeah, I would say it doesn't surprise me that to read it this way. The second one, a noticeable uncertainty to initiate new projects. This is really, for me, goes back to this public versus private. At which point do, um, do the investors, do the owners feel comfortable enough to really go forward? Yeah. So pretty interesting um, that we see a, a different... Um, um, different answers, different answers um, in this live poll and in the poll before. Um, do we have a question, Nina? Yes, we do. Yeah. I'll jump right on it. So the question is, in DAC, in DAC region, uh, so Germany, Switzerland and Austria, how has the August development compared to former years? Were there dips? If yes, it could be linked to building vacations um, in August all over Europe. Yes, this is very, very uh, good point. Thank you for the comment. Absolutely. Um, actually, yes, there are some dips and we spoke about them also back in April, I believe, uh, when it comes to Easter as well. Uh, we've noticed some of the dips in for the Easter break. We've noticed some of the dips for August as well. However, the extent of dips and the extent of recoveries is different in 2019 comparing to 2020. We'll be happy to share more information about it as well. So you can see the two graphs together. So you can see the comparison for yourself too. When it comes to August this year, I would say, um, as Simon was explaining up until now, um, yes, it could very well be related to vacations in August. I think the most we're going to see actually in one month when we are in our next webcast where we have that full month cover because in the beginning of August, I would say the data is still incomplete to pull proper conclusions. And the um, yeah question came from Suzanne and Suzanne, I'm glad to um, send you an email after the webcast um, to um, maybe also answer the the um, the, the email the, your question with um, 
a dedicated slide. Um, let's switch to the next question um, we have for you. And this is concerns um, the, the sales of services, so planning services or even um, products. So, for example, if you are um, a producer of Windows, how do you see the development within the next three months? Um, yeah, let's again give it a, a, um, a go. And I see the first votes um, arrive. Mm -hmm. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> um, right. And I can, in the meantime, I might recall from the German webcast, and we also have this German web, uh, the German version of the webcast one hour before. We also had this live poll, and the um, the the poll results if i if i'm correct and um, they were not that positive like in in this this english um, webcast but um yeah let's see what we um see here you know i think most of the votes are given yep it seems like it all right and again most of the answers say they have a neutral feeling um yeah neutral this could also be um indifferent or um we don't know um same percentage positive and negative so yeah this is a quite balanced um <laughs> balanced as, poll, as right? <laughs> before we've done basically the same exact question with our existing customers and a little bit on social media too and um, we have some different answers in what you've been given it. So let's look at those as well. Let's look at the answers. This would be the results for the first question. Um, this would be, yeah. How will sales of your services products develop in the next three months? In our poll, we see it 55% um, positive answers. Um, one example from a customer was, for example, we have full pipeline. Um, until uh, the end of 2020 so we are really positive that we will sell our products um, we are pretty sure we sell our products in the next three months as expected um, another answer was construction projects are continuing despite corona at the moment so also our products are therefore still in demand I guess this could also be related to this neutral answer that we've received from the webinar today from our attendees uh, because this kind of products are still in demand and it's already been planned um, does sound rather um, things are going well but rather neutral yes um, yeah. all right that brings us to our last question where we'll do the same type of poll so we'd love to hear one last time from you um, on the the last um, topic of the day. And last question um, referring to the um, construction phase of a project. So the third part of a, a business uh, a construction cycle would be how will capacity utilization on current construction sites develop over the next three months? We can um, give you an answer now. I see the first answers flying in pretty, <laughs> pretty fast. Yeah. More than 50, 60, more than 70, more than 80% voted already. We can give it another 10 seconds and then we can jump into the final conclusions. Yeah. So all right, we are nearly votes. everybody voted, so we can actually go forward with it. Perfect. Oh, now <laughs> I think this is a more clear, clear uh, result. So forty-four percent um, of the votes say we have a negative feeling about um, capacity utilization on 
current construction sites within the next three months. Um, this is, um, Nina, this is a little bit surprising to be honest. Um, if we, or at least if we look at the results from our um, poll and from what our customers say. So most of our customers, 70% say they have a positive feeling about the next three months um, about ongoing construction projects. Um, it might be that I also have should have explained the the, the question in more detail, but however, um, results stand and um, and yeah, so we collected mainly positive feedback. For example, um, the capacity utilization will remain unaffected until autumn, um, despite or without a second block term. So this um, was something um, um, a lot of customers and um, other persons answered um, this. Um, so they gave an answer and always within um, in, in parentheses without a second lockdown. So given that there is no second lockdown, um, construction site remain unaffected. And um, a second quote was that on our construction sites, we are not experiencing any restrictions in capacity utilizations at the moment, and we do not expect them for the next three months. Um, here I can add this was clearly different at the beginning of the corona shutdowns where the borders to other countries um, closed. I remember customers from Austria, for example, or other countries um, said that construction sites could um, not that good um, be continued uh, because the um, transfer of um, working forces between countries and also from products um, were stopped and limited. Absolutely. Also, with the with the more strict lockdowns, the fact that um, the working times were very very limited also that had a quite a big impact from from what I've been hearing from different customers too. Yes, and um, Nina, this would be um, the um, end of our today's webcast. Um, from my side, I can say thank you very much. Um, thank you um, to all attendees for your uh, votes. Next webcast will be on September 10th, again at 5 p.m. Um, Berlin time. Um, anything to add from your side, Nina? From my side, same. Thanks a lot for your um, your attendance as well as sharing your opinion. That's that's really what makes this um, a more interesting webcast. Absolutely, we would like to keep the format with polls. If you've liked it or didn't like it, feel free to give us feedback to it as well. Um, and like Simon said, we really look forward to welcoming you on September 10th, again, 5 p.m. Um, same link, so it shouldn't be complicated. And uh, yeah, have a great month until we see you again. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, Nina. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.